a stand. What has transpired is a full-scale attack on the body of Christ and on the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church was never supposed to meet again. But I know that there's going to be another great spiritual awakening in America. And there's not a devil in hell that can stop it. You cannot stop the wave of the Holy Ghost. You cannot stop the church. And they shall rise up. They shall rise up. A prophet's sign they will rise up. We'll be standing for the word of God tonight. We stand for signs and wonders and miracles. We stand for Pentecost. Every tribe and tongue together as one. This is the hour of the church. Say that the
ahead and have a seat for a moment. We're just going to go into the announcements and go ahead straight back to the service. Thank you for everybody watching online. Thank you for everybody watching here, hungry, ready to receive the Word of God. This is the stand number 1,389. Hallelujah. We are making a stand. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for uh, joining us as we are making a stand for truth for the United States, the Constitution of the United States, the gospel. The Word of God being preached, demonstrated, and the power of God released. Hallelujah. Right before we head back, uh, just real quick. If you see the number on the screen and you need a miracle in your life, if you need a prayer request, if you want to surrender your life to the Lord, whatever need it is that Jesus paid for you on the cross, go ahead and call that number on the screen. Uh, we have life prayer operators standing by in the call center willing to receive your call, release God's word and power over your life so that you can receive your miracle. Amen. Uh, if you have not followed Pastor Rodden yet on Instagram, he's about to head out to Africa in two days. You want to follow to see where your money is going, how many souls is, are being won with your money as you submit your tithe and your offerings. Please go ahead and follow him, Rodney Howard Brown, on Instagram. Also, we have been throttled back a lot on YouTube, so if you want to just go ahead and share and like the broadcast. That way, even if you're here on, on property, pick up, you know, pull up your phone, share and like that broadcast. Be part of distributing, contributing to spreading the word of God. Amen. Uh, Revival.com, obviously, our uh, website with itinerary, the shop, pictures of the event. Most likely, you're going to be on the website tomorrow. So make sure you're all engaged, not distracted. Uh, River University. We have still scholarships available for River University. If you call to a full-time ministry, you call for government, for worship, uh, culinary, anything that the Lord has called you to do. We're basically here to raise you up, equip you, train you, and launch you so that you're ready to accomplish heaven's purpose on your life. Go to riveruniversity.org, submit an inquiry for your scholarship. Even if you're here on property, have you have not answered a call on your life so far, go ahead and submit the increase, start the application, and start in August. Amen. River School of the Bible Online. If you cannot make it on property, uh, obviously, if you're called to full-time ministry, this is not for you. But if you, you know, if you want to deepen your knowledge in the Word of God, if you want to just get more rooted and grounded in sound doctrine, River School of the Bible Online, we're offering courses. Go to RSB, sorry, revival.com slash RSB or just give uh, revival.com and click on ministries RSB. We have a current 50% discount while the stand is running. You can go ahead and sign up over there as well. Um, healing School, the River School of Healing. How many are here right now currently attending the River School of Healing? Come on, give a hand. Thank you, Jesus. The River School of Healing, isn't that powerful? So two-week session free of charge if you deal with any incurable diseases. Doctors have given up on you, your family, your loved ones, you yourself have given up on you. Uh, there's hope for you. God wants to do a work in and through you. God wants to restore your life, restore your marriage, restore your mind, your health, your mind, your soul. Healing school for any ailment. In Jesus' name, sign up on revival.com, click on Ministries Healing School, or go straight on the Healing School Facebook page and sign up over there as well. Uh, it's every first Monday of the month and uh, the third week, the Monday of the third week of the month. Um, then, the 12 hour prayer. How many have joined the 12 hour prayer before? Okay, some of you. If you have never joined the 12 hour prayer, it's a challenge for your flesh, but you need to be part of it to kill your flesh so that the resurrection power of Christ is manifested in your life. Amen. The next session is on uh, April the 15th from 12 p.m. till 12 a.m. So we're going to do a 12 hour prayer session. Even if you cannot be fully a part of all the 12 hours, come at least for a couple of hours. Consecrate yourself and believe God for mountains to be moved in your life. Amen. And then obviously the car show each month, the next car show is going to uh, be on uh, May 11th. That's gonna, the upcoming one. If you have not read Pastor Rodney's book or have not looked into it, we act, he released just some recent books. Some of you already started. We, he released The Holy Spirit, The Ways of the Wind, Revival, um, The Call of God. Think on these things, obviously a devotional. And then last but not least, we have an upcoming conference again coming out, the Ministers and Leaders Conference in May called The Shout. Go ahead and watch the promo video and right after that, straight back into worship. God bless you. video.
everything shall tremble and quake. I saw it in the spirit, the shouts that will be heard around the world. Because there's coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ will rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. I believe what we are about to see in the next three years will eclipse everything that we've ever seen. Everything in the kingdom of God is about to be escalated and the power of God is going to flow forth from the church. It shall be shouted from the mountaintops until the whole of America knows that Jesus is alive, that he is real, that he's coming soon. The shout! The shout that will be heard around the world! The shout that will come in your nation! Get ready! I'm telling you right now, you get ready!
just want, we just want. Oh, lift your hands and lift your voice and say, King of glory, come and fill this place. Have your way, have your way. <laughs> Wherever you are is where we want. Jesus bled 
bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that perfect tree. His body bowed and drenched in seas. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing.
He is the great I am, the Prince of Peace, the Bread of Life. For endless days, we will praise His name. His name is great. Jesus, His name is wonderful. His name is powerful, glorious. What a beautiful name. What an awesome name. What a great name. And it's through faith in His name that you are standing here tonight. That you are alive today and that you are well and that you are sound and that you are blessed and that you are free, and that you are saved through faith in His name. For there is no other name given to us on this earth by which we can be saved. But the only wonderful, powerful, awesome, mighty, glorious, anointed name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just give Him worship and honor and praise and just tell Him how much you love Him. Just tell Him how much you adore Him. Just tell Him what a wonderful name it is. Just tell Him how grateful you are today, how thankful you are today. Just shout that beautiful, awesome name, the name of Jesus. For we will shout it from the mountaintops. We will declare it from the rooftops. We will say His name in the streetways, in the pathways of life. We will shout the name of Jesus. For there is power in His name. Sickness and disease go in His name. Devils check out in His name. Fear goes in His name. Pain goes in His name. Oh, what a wonderful name. You got to draw with joy from the wells of this salvation that Christ has come and Christ has died. He was buried and then He rose from the dead and He's alive forevermore. And we are alive together with Him. And what a glorious, phenomenal kingdom this is. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of righteousness. The kingdom of glory. The kingdom of authority and power. The kingdom of joy. The kingdom of peace. For Jesus has come to give us life. And He has come to give you life. Where is that life? Where is the love? It is right here, right now. For the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that lives on the inside of you right now. You are fully flooded with God Himself for the greater one lives on the inside of you. What a glorious day this is to be alive. What a fantastic day this is to be alive and to worship the one and only true King. As we were worshiping King of glory, King of glory, King of glory, King of kings. For we will dance for you. We will shout for you. We will praise you all the days of our lives. As we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne. Forever you will be my Lord, my Savior. My, you are my healer, my deliverer. You are my everlasting Father. You are great and greatly to be praised. What is that endless praise?
Father, we honor you tonight. We love you so much. We worship you. All around the world, watching online, worship the Lord. Just thank Him. Just honor Him. I can't wait for eternity. Don't wait. Join the song they're already singing. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Just to bow down before your throne. See your face, I'll cry out because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Jesus, King of Kings. song they're already singing holy, holy, holy are you just to bow down before your throne see your face I'll cry out because you're
Father, touch every hungry heart tonight. Fill every hungry heart to overflow. As we cry out to you, holy, holy, and worthy, and worthy, how majestic is your name. We give you honor. <laughs> we give you praise. We give you praise. <laughs> We singing worthy, worthy, <laughs> forever and ever. <laughs> we give you honor, all the glory. The presence of the Lord is in this place. And the presence of the Lord is flooding your homes right now. The Holy Spirit is touching you in your home. Filling your heart. I can already see how the Holy Spirit is comforting your heart. Maybe some of you watching have experienced a loss of a loved one. Maybe the grief of your child or maybe the grief of your husband or your wife or whatever the loss was. I can already see right now how the Holy Spirit is just comforting your heart. And how He's healing your heart. Or maybe because it's the end of the month You've been stressing so much. And it's as though you became very anxious. I want to tell you that right now, the presence of the Lord is just flooding your heart. Letting that anxiety go. Letting that fear go. Letting that turmoil go. That inner conflict, that stress. No more. Just tonight receive all that heaven has for you just receive all that the Lord Jesus has for you just receive what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life he's the one that turns your sorrow to joy he's the one that turns your mourning to dancing he's the one that takes you out out of darkness he's the one that brings you into his marvelous light into his kingdom of his dear son of his love he is the one and only he is the way the truth and the life and his name is Jesus and that's why we've been singing that's why we have proclaiming that's why we have been rejoicing that's why we have been worshiping because he is Jesus the great I am the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords let him be Lord of your life today let him be Lord of your of your relationships of everything that you are busy with your work your business everything you are part of let the kingdom of God seek his kingdom first tonight seek the Lord first tonight in all your endeavors in everything that you're a part with I want to tell you that tonight is your night Tonight is the night of all nights because you have come to the stand. Pastor Rodney and Adonica have been standing. This is night 1389 of taking a stand with the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world for our brothers and sisters who are unable to meet now or that are still in their homes or still countries that are, that are enforcing they, they, they locked down rules where people don't even meet anymore and churches that close down and forever they close their doors and those that open again the, the people didn't come back but here is a place on the planet called the river church at Tampa Bay where our pastors took a stand and said we will not bow we will not bow to the plan of the enemy but we will stand for our Lord Jesus Christ 
And for doing that, people around the world have been set free. People around the world have been healed, delivered, saved. And I've heard the gospel into their homes. People that are watching online, that have tuned through channels, suddenly just came up to the stand and they gave their hearts to Christ and their lives were changed forever. And here you are tonight, on this Monday night. And Pastor Rodney declared that this month, the month of April, even though we are part of the hips and we are laying our foundations and we're laying foundation upon foundation because you're just... At the, at the beginning of how big and how great and how uh, uh, wide and how long you're going to go. Your future is bright. I want to tell you that. But I want to tell you that get ready for a surprise tonight. It is a surprise month to have a surprise every day. Take a hold of your surprise tonight. Hey, listen, this night is not gone yet. It's still... It's still, you're still alive. You haven't died. You're alive and refuse to die. Make sure that this is the day that the Lord has made and you will rejoice and you will be glad in this day and make sure that your life belongs to Christ. Make sure that you are ever ready for the soon coming King and then be expectant tonight to receive miracles and be expectant for a surprise. Let the Lord surprise you with miracles. God is able. God is able. Our God is able. He is the God that is more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Than enough. Forever enough. <laughs> Always enough. Jairo. He is my provider. He's a promise keeper. He's my way maker. The light in the darkness. Truly. Faithful God. Faithful God. Wonderful King. Lord of Lords. El Shaddai. You are more than enough, more than enough, always enough, forever enough. Tonight, I surprise you. The Lord surprising you tonight. Suddenly, you're just going to sit there and flood your heart with so much passion. So much strength. Gifts, gifts from heaven, supernatural gifts. All you need to do is be like somebody that shows up and say, I'm here for my gift. And I'm happy because I'm getting a gift tonight. Please don't be that one child. Oh, why can't I have that gift? Why can't I have this? No, no, take the surprise that God is giving you tonight. I'm telling you, He's giving you freedom tonight. He's giving you, He's giving you provision tonight. He's giving you healing and health tonight. He's giving you provision. He's giving you a protection. I'm telling you, He's surprising you with His protection power tonight. Abundant supply tonight. I'm telling you, when you wake up in the morning, you've been given ideas while you were sleeping and then you wake up and then you have supernatural ideas, witty plans. I'm telling you, you wake up rich, you wake up full of life because He has surprised you. Hey, beloved, I surprise you in your sleep. How do you even know that an angel of God won't encounter you tonight and say to you, Hey! All your prayers and all your giving has come up before God. <laughs> Are you going to be that one? Are you that one? 
Who's going to receive like you have never received before? Who's going to praise Him tonight like you've never praised Him before? Who's going to give tonight like you haven't given before? Because tonight is surprise night. Supernatural surprise. I'm talking about a supply price. Hey, hey. A source of supply surprise. And you didn't even know where it, where it came from. It just, uh, they called you and say you overpaid the school fees and I'm sending you a whole years of school fees back. That's what happened to me last month. Hey, hey. Surprise, surprise. What's going to show up in your account tonight? Surprise, surprise. What car is going to su surprise you this week? What house? What phone call? What phone call is coming to you this week? Surprise, surprise. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful. You can have a phenomenal seat. Praise the living Lord Jesus. Thank you, worship team. Welcome to this stand, the night of 1,389 with our pastors, Pastor Rodney and Adonica Hart-Brown here at the River Church in Tampa Bay. And it's such an honor to be with you here tonight and a, a privilege to share the Word of God with you and to, and to make you what the Word talks about so that you can go back with a testimony and that you can come back with a testimony and that you can walk around with a testimony and that your life is a testimony for the glory of God. Amen. 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 Are you happy? Yes. Are you happy that you're alive? Yes. Are you happy that you're here tonight? Yes. I want to let you know that in two days' time, our pastors are leaving for the Africa tour and it's going to be signs, wonders, and miracles everywhere. And let me tell you, souls are going to be one. And let me tell you, people are going to be healed. People are going to be delivered. People are going to be set free. And it's going to be phenomenal. And let me tell you, we are all a part of us. You are and I, and we all a part of this team going around the world and going on that mission. And I want to quickly, before we give you an opportunity to sow seed tonight, and before I'm going to ask my wonderful wife to come up and share with you a message on giving and of faith for you tonight, I want you to watch this video clip of the Africa tour coming up, and then we'll be right back. The Lord said to me, run to the nations. I came to light a fire. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Souls must be your number one goal for your life. From now to Jesus comes. Because when the fire touches you, you're going to win souls and you're going to bring in the harvest of souls. You have to get the word of the Lord for yourself. It's got a burn on the inside of you. So we're going to see the harvest coming. Stand and fight by the power of the Holy Ghost. And tell the devil, you're not going to have my country. You're not going to have my nation. The whole of Africa is going to be shaken by the hand of God. Africa, praise. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you what a wonderful Easter Sunday we had. Amen. Amen. So many souls came into the kingdom of God. Phenomenal to see all of those different faces and the kids and the parents and they don't know what hit them. They came for an outreach and suddenly they are filled with a message and they are filled with the Holy Ghost and their lives are touched and changed. 
Let me tell you, during the um, Resurrection Sunday, I just realized that we are partakers of the blood of Jesus. We are partakers of his word. We are partakers of his blood. We are partakers of his blood, of his power, and we are partakers of his presence. So tonight I wanna ask you, what are the thoughts that you're thinking about yourself? I laughed this morning, somebody sent me a message and said, if Jesus paid it all yesterday, why should I still pay my bills? And I thought it was very funny because I thought to myself, that is the kind of mindset that person houses to say that. But can you imagine that the word of God, as it's being preached, it's sowed, right? And as the word of God that you sow, it needs to fall on a certain soil of ground so that the enemy doesn't come and steal it away. Yes, the price has been paid, but what are the thoughts that you are thinking about yourself tonight? Because Proverbs chapter 23 verse seven says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so easy or so will he become? So easy. So can you imagine tonight the very thought that you are thinking about yourself has accumulated to a point where you have actually become the very thoughts you are thinking about yourself. Hey! So I came to ask you, what are the thoughts you're thinking about yourself? Are you thinking that you are rich? Are you thinking abundant supply? Are you are thinking more than an overcomer? What are the thoughts you are thinking about yourself that is putting your life in a certain direction or the actual fact that you are finding yourself tonight in the position that you are in because of the way that you are thinking? So I'm going upward and forward. Come on, say, I'm going upward and forward. That means your life is for the glory of God. So if Jesus Christ came and He rose from the dead and He came to bring us excess of power, excess of glory, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, have you decided that that's gonna be your story? Have you decided that's gonna be your testimony? Do you know, like my husband explained on Friday as well at the stand, but when Jesus rose from the dead, right, he ascended down to Hades because where do sinners go? They go to hell, right? But he would never have given us the keys of the kingdom if he didn't have them. He gave us the keys of the kingdom that whatsoever we opened up is opened up and whatsoever we close is closed off. How many of you opened up a million dollars for yourself today? Oh, it's too small, 10 million? <laughs> Some of you went a little bit bigger? Let me tell you, whatever you opened up will be opened up. So that's why I came to ask you tonight before you give, I wanna ask you, what are the thoughts you're thinking about yourself? Because that will accumulate into your giving. If your thoughts are that I reign and rule in this life, if your thoughts are, Father, I thank you, business opportunities are coming my way. If your thoughts are that souls are the number one commodity here on earth that I'm going to take with me once I check out of here, your giving will be in line with the thoughts that you have concerning yourself. So let me tell you on Sunday, I was laughing again. I stood there where the, where the cars are because, you know, right now at the river, uh, Pastor Rodney is giving away a car every Sunday, right? Man, I saw people walking around the car talking in tongues. Then I saw the next one putting their foot on the wheel. Then I saw the next one's hand on the palm of the car. And I'm like, oh my word, they're going for it. And then I heard the other one say, I wonder if the whole church is gonna wear white on Sunday. And then the other one said, I'm not sure, they're gonna give away the white car or the black car. Then they were saying, okay, one of us should wear white, the other one should wear black. And so these people are contemplating and I'm watching them. And I'm thinking to myself, can you imagine that in the kingdom of God, there is no lack, there is no want. But a certain lady woke up that morning and she said, man, I'm gonna wear a red hat with red shoes because that red car is coming my way. She wasn't even sure which car was gonna be given out, but she was ready. She came ready. Why? Because in her mind, she had already made up her mind that that is what is hers. She's the only one I saw with a red hat and red shoes. Right? 
So now can you imagine what are the thoughts you're thinking today about yourself that is pushing your life in the direction that you are going in? If it's the wrong thoughts, you need to sow some new seeds so that the new seeds can enter your heart to produce forth a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. So your heart isn't just there to let the blood pump through it and then all of us wonder where we are going. Your heart is there to produce life because out of your own heart will flow the issues. Say issues. For every issue, there's a tissue. No, I'm just joking. But let me tell you, out of your own heart will flow issues. So what's coming out of your heart tonight? Is abundant life coming out of your heart? Because then God goes to say, He says, where your treasure is. He says, where your money pocket is. That's where your heart is. So if He looks at you tonight and He sees you, does He see your heart belongs to the kingdom? You know, as I was growing up, my dad was a radical giver because we met Pastor Rodney online and we were watching Pastor Rodney on the TV and suddenly my dad overnight became a radical giver. So I go to school and as I come home from school, I walk into my room, all of my furniture gone out of the room. I thought it was um, a, a, a robbery. Somebody had stolen everything in my room. But then I go to my sister's rooms and my brother and I see all of their furniture is still there. So I say, Daddy, my room is empty. He said, yes, girl, there were missionaries that came past today, our house, and I thought your bed and all of your furniture is still brand new that we just got the other day. I said, yes, you got it for me the other day. He said, but I decided we're giving your furniture. I looked at him at first. I thought, this is not right. Can you imagine your parents giving away all of your furniture in your room? But I was excited because I thought if he had given away mine, I'm expecting a harvest. That night, he said, go sleep in your sister's room with her. I said, no, I'll sleep in my empty room, seeing that you gave away my furniture here in my room. <laughs> Slept on the floor, felt sorry for myself, I must be honest. That next morning, he says, come, babe, we're going to go buy you a new bed. As we get to the place where we are going, it is unbelievers' shops, uh, shop. It was a Muslim guy's shop. And it was a Friday morning, and he said this Friday morning when he woke up, he will give the first client that comes into his shop all of the stuff that they need for free. We walk into the shop, we don't know what he has made up his mind to do. I'm choosing myself the best bed. I'm getting cloud number nine mattress people. We're going places. And I'm getting everything ready. And as we want to pay, the man said, you guys can leave. You don't owe me anything for this. Let me tell you, God will even use an unbeliever to bless you. And then I realized that in this kingdom that we belong to, he says, as long as the earth remains. What did he say? Seed time. If it's seed time and harvest, what of the word of God are you planting in your heart that you will harvest? In the next 30, 60, 90 days. Pastor said it's the months of heaps that are ahead of us. What are the seeds that you personally have planted in your heart concerning your future, concerning the business plans you have, concerning whatever you are asking the Lord for, for the next few months ahead? So another day, my dad and I and my family, we go and visit people that are spreading the gospel as we have visited them, he says, I'm blessing you with our combi. What will that, pickup bus, I think it's a pickup, a pickup bus, right? A, what? a minivan, sorry folks, a minivan, translation error, minivan. And um, I asked him, dad, but how will we get home? We, have a, we were four kids and then my mom and my dad. So we're we hiking home. He said, no, don't worry. They will drop us off. So he gave away our car, our family vehicle. And now the next day we are four in one, uh, uh, the smaller car. We are now sitting four in the back row. And you know, when you have siblings, you don't want to sit close to them. You want your space. But can you imagine... How many cars? So my dad had the privilege of giving away over 32 vehicles in the time that he was alive. What are the thoughts you're thinking about yourself? That's what I came to ask you. 
What are the thoughts you're thinking about yourself? Have you already made up your mind that, Father, I thank you that I wanna give away 60 vehicles in the time that I'm alive. Father, I thank you, I wanna give away, how many diamond rings do you wanna give away? How many houses have you planned that you're gonna give away? Because the blessings of God makes rich and adds no sorrow. But as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now look at this in Proverbs. I just wanna read something to you. It says here, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30. He says, I went by a field of a slothful and by the, wine, uh, um, by the vineyard of a man void of understanding. So he says here he's passing a field because how many of you know your heart is the field? He says, I went by a field and this is what I saw. I saw a lazy man over there. How come he described him as lazy? Just, just, just hear this. He says, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Can you imagine a stone wall? The property we had bought in South Africa had stone walls. Do you know how hard a stone wall is? We were trying to break down one part of it. The wall was so hard, we would even get a jackhammer, but the wall wouldn't move. Now, can you imagine how many years did this man do nothing that all of his field was just filled with, with um, nettles and thorns and thistles, everything had overgrown. So this is how this man's field is looking. And the stone wall, probably for generations, they hadn't done the word of God. Because listen to this. He says, and I saw and considered it well, I looked upon it and received instruction. The moment when he saw it, he said, man, I'll never be lazy in my life. I'm never gonna let a day go by where I don't put the word of God in my heart because I saw how a person's field looked that never worked it, that never worked the word and came back with a testimony. I saw how it looked, somebody's heart looked that never put the word of God in their hearts. I saw it and it was terrible. Even the stone walls couldn't keep standing. So I'm fruitful ground. So if you're fruitful ground, you gotta put some seeds in that ground of yours. What are the seeds of surplus you have added into your ground? For instance, are you ready for heaps? Are you sure you're asking and you know what you're asking the Lord for and trusting Him? You know, I always wanted a macaw, you know, a macaw parrot. So I thought, man, Lord, I trusting you for a macaw parrot. I had it for four days. I couldn't stand it. <laughs> Somebody then had blessed me. I put my faith out. I said, Lord, I'm trusting you for this parrot. I had sowed several other parrots and I was excited. Man, a lady called, she said she's moving and she blesses me with her macaw parrot. It's a huge bird, folks. Beautiful colors under the wings. But the voice of that parrot is like the sound of a screeching, I don't know what. That next morning at 4, 4.30, it was still in the summer, we just hear, Aah! I said, oh my word, what is that noise? My son wakes up, he runs to our room, he said, what is that noise? I said, it's the gift I was asking the Lord for. He said, please mom, we need to get rid of it, it's too much. In the afternoon, a certain time, when that thing started, I thought it was just beautiful. Have you ever seen the pictures and them flying out in the Amazon, in the wild, they look so beautiful? You know, sometimes you're trusting the Lord for certain stuff, but can your infrastructure even hold what you are asking the Lord for? I said, okay, Lord, you know what? I need somebody with a farm. I called up several people. I had to make sure it's not people living in a neighborhood close by, because for the first time we received calls. We were living in a security estate. The neighbor, uh, hello, I just wanna know, what is that excruciating noise coming from you at five in the morning? So your infrastructure, are you ready for whatever God wants to bless you with? Have you set your parameters? Are you ready to be blessed coming in, going out? None of your steps shall slide. Have you made up your mind that you're the head and not the tail? That you're going upward and forward all the days of your life? What are the thoughts you're thinking about yourself? 
Because let me tell you, today the angels of God are ready to do the Word of God. So how much of His Word do you have inside of your heart that there are angels walking everywhere where you are going? Listen to this. Let me read it to you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Are not all the angels ministering spirits sent out by God to serve, accompany, protect those who will inherit salvation? Of course they are. Angels at your service. And then Psalms 103 verse 20, bless the Lord, ye angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments and hearken unto the voice of his word. Today, the angels of God are ready to do whatever the word of God has said. They not awake over your tears. You can cry 5,000 tears, but if you don't have seed in the ground, nothing will change concerning your financial status. But if you have seed in the ground, you can say, Lord, I thank you that the angels of God have been sent forth, ready to do the word of God. So I'm, I'm up, ready, loaded. I've got seed in the ground. I'm expecting a harvest. That's why it says in Matthew, it says, a good man out of the good treasure out of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil heart brings forth evil things. So if you're born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, only good can come out of you. Amen. Say good things, good things. Great, things. great things, glorious things. Glorious. So your seed in, your gra- in the ground will talk for you. I'll never forget the first time I decided in my life, I wanna give away several diamond rings because it's the first business the Lord had blessed me with. So the first time my husband had given me my wedding band, my wedding ring with a diamond, I said, babe, the Lord spoke to me. I want to sew my wedding ring. And he looked at me, he said, what, babe? I said, yes, I wanna give the Lord the best. Can you imagine when you leave this earth, you take nothing with you? I had the privilege of going to clean up after my husband's grandmother passed away. And that's when I really realized you take nothing. Here I see granny's teeth in the cup. When I saw it, I was so shocked. I said, man, they should have given her her teeth. They shouldn't have left it here. Her smile, every time I looked at it, I could see her smile. It upset me so much, I walked outside. And the Lord asked me, why are you so upset? I said, Lord, do you wanna tell me you don't even take your teeth with you? The very thing that's feeding your hips, giving you a muffin top. (laughs) You don't even take it with you. It dawned on me. I don't know, that for me, it just dawned on me that you won't even take the teeth with you that is feeding you. Now, can you imagine everything we have? You're not going to take anything with you. So I decided, man, Lord, I want to give you my best. So I sewed my first wedding ring. Then the second one, my husband bought again. Then the third one, he bought, he put my name in it. He said, no, babe, now it's between you and God. He said, you've given it away several times. Now it's between you and God. But let me tell you, the Lord is always faithful. I've been able to give away 15 wedding rings aside from diamond stones and all the other stones, tanzanites and whatever there is, whatever the Lord has put in my because that stuff does not own me. Whatever you are asking the Lord for, will it take you out of the kingdom? We had another guy, he said, pastors, just pray for me because um, I need a job and I need all of this stuff. Okay, we prayed with a man. We said, okay, we're trusting the Lord with you for all of that to come in. The moment it came in, the man left the church. A few Sundays, we didn't see him. We called him, said, okay, where are you? He said, you know what, pastor, let me just tell you, with this new position, we now have meetings on Sunday. And guess where we meet? At the golf course. I said, God forbid. I remember the day when you had nothing and you served the Lord. And then suddenly when the stuff came in, maybe some of you don't have a vehicle, but then the moment the vehicle comes in, you're under away from where you're supposed to be. You'll actually be amazed. And that's the thought, that's what I'm asking you tonight. 
What are the thoughts you're thinking about yourself? Have you made up your mind you're gonna be in the house of God until length of days? Because they that are planted in the house will flourish. He didn't say when you feel like it. I never saw a plant today, it's planted, tomorrow it's uprooted. Then it lies by the side for a few months and then we quickly plant it before it dies and then we uproot it again for a few weeks and then we plant it again. No wonder they're not flourishing. They don't have time to be watered and grow and grow and grow. To what? To carry fruit in season and out of season so that your leaf will not wither, so that you will constantly be abundantly supplied, lacking nothing. Yes, Jesus paid it all. But have you put his word inside of your heart? Have you put it in so much that the Holy Ghost can quicken every word of God concerning your life so that your marriage can flourish, so that your job can flourish, so that everything in your life can flourish? The seed of the word. The seed of the word of God. Because His Word is spirit and life. And all it wants to do is enter fruitful ground. God today is standing ever ready to bless us. Say, God is ready to bless me. But if the thoughts you're thinking about yourself is poverty stricken, you will always work yourself back to zero. What do I mean? In Africa, some of the guys were taking back some of the farms, right? The guy didn't have any knowledge that, that they took the farms from. They had no knowledge of farming. So they take away the farm, and then as soon as they take away the farm, a few months later when you visit it, no, nothing is growing, no crop is growing. So nobody furthered the business and they opened the doors of the houses. They broke down everything inside of the houses. Now the chickens and the cows are just walking through the house and there's maybe, they are planting for five people. They are planting food. For real? Why? The mentality of the person was just to cook for five people and to produce for five people. So whatever came into his hands, he worked it back until he only had five God wants to increase you on the inside. He wants to let the capacity on the inside of you grow so much so that He can entrust more into your hands so that you can actually dominate an industry, so that you can actually be the head and not the tail, so that you can actually be above and not beneath, so that you can actually be steadfast, immovable and always abounding unto every good work. But if you're small on the inside, you will work everything back to small. Because your capacity and the way that you think was never enlarged. That's why some people, they come into the house of God and they live the same way. How is that even possible? Because when they were there, they never opened up their heart for change. So it doesn't help you get angry. No, I'm not gonna give. No, I'm not gonna be a part of that. No, there's other people. It's fine, you can keep reasoning like that, but no wonder your life doesn't go forward. Or you say, Lord, I refuse to be like the Israelites that stayed in the desert. They stayed in the desert 40 years. They couldn't get out of the desert. How come? Because they were unpersuadable. They didn't allow the Word of God to persuade them. When they heard the Word of God, they said, no, we won't do it. The Lord said, okay, circle one more time. Some people's hearts, they have so hardened and that's why there's never the good that comes out because the only thing that comes out is your old ways of thinking and doing like the factory settings. The way your parents did a factory setting on the inside, doot, 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 and then you came out, you talk a certain way, you reason a certain way, you give a certain way. But because my dad gave so radically, that's what I saw and I saw it working. He would give away our furniture. We had at one stage six uh, 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 different sets of lounge, um, living room area sets piled on top of each other. So he said, you know what, my wife, I don't even think we should give anything because how the heck are we even gonna keep piling up the moment he would give a set, somebody else would bring another set. Say so giving, giving works. works. Fruitful, Fruitful ground. Not any ground. Don't put your seed in any ground. 
You put it in fruitful ground where souls are being won, where the commodity of heaven will be counted on your behalf for your account. Men will come and give back unto your bosom, pressed down, shaken together and running over. But if you give, say, Lord, I'm not sure. I'm just giving you my last. No, just stop right there. You say, Father, I name this seed breakthrough in whatever area you need. And the moment when you name that seed, you mean business with God. No farmer sows a tomato and then he expects a pineapple. He says, I'm expecting big pineapple seed. And then he says, come on, tomatoes, pineapple, pineapple, pineapple. No matter how many times he says pineapple, that thing can only produce tomato because it's a tomato seed. Are you with me? So let your seed do the talking. You don't have to worry. We don't have to stress. The Bible says in due time, if you faint not, you will reap a harvest. Some people start fainting just before they're like, okay, I'm at the end. Okay. <laughs> don't faint. Just keep standing. You sing to yourself, I'll keep standing. Just keep standing. Verse what said that we should give up? There's no verse in the Bible that says we can give up. No, he says, Philippians, let me read it to you. Philippians chapter four, from verse four, it says rejoice in the Lord evermore, right? And again, I say rejoice. And then it says, um, I know it off by heart, but then it says, make your requests Known unto God. So many people, Pastor, can I quickly see you? I just have to tell you, I can't pay my bills. I said, where in your Bible does it say you must see me? But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add my faith to yours. What are you trusting the Lord for? So I'm gonna make my requests. And I've got a whole list. Come on, so I'm gonna make my requests. Known unto God. So it says, make your requests. Known unto God. So as you've made your request known unto God, you have to add some thanksgiving. You have to add some rejoicing. Why? Because you're working with the king of the universe. You're working with the monarch of the universe. You are working with the great I am. You are working with the prince of peace. You're working with the bread of life. You're working, you're working with the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You don't want to talk to him. You rather want to talk to me. So I've got to make my requests known unto God. So it says with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So there's a way that you make your requests known to God. And then what's going to happen? With thanksgiving. It says, and then the peace of God. What's going to happen with that peace? Where's it going to go to? Ruling your heart. Once again, your heart needs it so that issues don't start coming out of your heart. Your heart needs it because as you think about yourself, that's how you are. Your heart needs the peace so that you can keep going in the direction that you already saw God has in store for you. I never gave anything to say, okay, Lord, I'm giving this because this is now, um, if you don't help me, then I don't know. No, I always said, Father, I thank you. What an honor to give something that has me, something that I love. If it was glasses and I realized, man, this glasses is now, I'm looking at myself 20 times in the mirror just to see if the glass is still sitting fine. I said, this one is seed. Why? Whatever that was precious to me, that's what I always wanted to give God. That's why David said, Lord, I don't want to give you anything that costs me nothing. Because your heart, all the Lord is checking for is your heart. He wants to shake this earth, but then it doesn't help. Here comes the car. Okay, Lord, I'm not serving you anymore. You want to tell me for four tires? You're not serving the Lord anymore because you got four tires? You got to be kidding me. So Lord, I gave once off and that is it. Now I'm waiting. 
You just keep sowing. He says, sow in the morning and withhold not your hand in the evening because you do not know at whatever point of time your harvest will come up. It's a sure thing. We're not talking to a man here. He says, men can lie. He says, but with God, there's no shadow of turning. He's not gonna change because your parents told you something. God has set His Word in place. And if you can dare to believe Him, you will always come back with a testimony. So when you're working with the king, let me tell you how many of you, if you would talk to, let's say, for instance, who's rich in this country, not Donald Trump. Let's say, for instance, you're going to talk to the president, Donald Trump, right? Which is not now, but let's just imagine, okay, for a moment. Oh, so we just enjoy the moment. Thing. Okay, yes, and then we're back again. How many of you would come out with a detailed whatever you're trusting for if you knew he was going to one that was going to meet your needs? How many of you would have taken out days and be detailed? You would work it down to the tax percentage to the 000.12. You know, you'll have all of your stuff ready like an accountant, you'll be ready because you're gonna talk to a man that has a left side of the brain that wants to see the digits on the paper. (laughs) Now you're talking to the king of the universe. The Amplified says, make your specific requests known unto God. The king of the universe, Lord, whatever, whatever you wanna give me, that's fine. You won't even know if it's God showing up. It's like the one man driving and then he saw the mall and he's like, Lord, give me a parking right in front. I don't wanna walk that far. So then as soon as as he's driving and he sees the, he said, don't worry, Lord, I got it myself. Some people pray one way, but then when they talk, it's contrary to what they're actually trusting the Lord for. When they go inside their room, they may be bold about what they're trusting the Lord for. But when they, when they come out and they start vocalizing when they talk, it's the opposite as what, if, um, as what they're trusting God for. You'll be amazed. Check yourself out. So, Lord, I'm trusting you for big things. And then when you come out, so how are you doing? I'm a little bit under the weather. And then usually I ask the people, verse What? Verse, what are you basing whatever you're feeling right now? Have you made up your mind that the word of God is the sure foundation that is immovable, that's not gonna change? Have you made up your mind that he's gonna supply all my needs are met according to his riches? Is God rich today? So all my needs needs are met met according according to his riches riches. in glory. In Christ Jesus. So I need to stay in Christ Jesus for all my needs to be met. Everything met. Nothing missing, nothing out of place. Everything met. Amen. So where you are, lift your hands tonight and ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to give tonight? You ask the Lord because he's the one in any case that gave it to you. You had strength in your body to go and work to accumulate whatever you thought. That brain in yours that can work out the figures. Don't you think he gave you that sound mind? Everything in any case you have belongs to him. Everything. Father, I thank you for the blessing of God that makes rich and that adds no sorrow. I thank you for each one under the sound of my voice. As they have heard the word of God, Father, I thank you for testimonies upon testimonies in their personal lives in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for abundance of blessing that is locating each and every house, whether it be cars, whether it be houses, whether it be furniture, whether it be food. We thank you that you're the creator of the universe. We thank you that you've given us ministering angels that is ready and awake over your word, ready to perform it. I thank you, Lord. Your word says as long as the earth remains, it's seed time and harvest. I thank you for all the seeds that are in the ground from each and every one of your members because it's your house and it's your kingdom. 
I thank you, Lord, for a hundred and a thousand fold harvest on each and every seed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, lacking nothing, I thank you that every spirit of lack has been rebuked concerning them in Jesus' name. Amen. There'll be no want amongst your flock. There'll be no lack amongst your flock. I thank you, Lord, that in every occasion, having all things in all sufficiency, having all things, all things, all things, thank you for business opportunities that are coming their way in Jesus' name. With the inventions. Father, we thank you the thoughts that we think about ourselves tonight are glorious thoughts because your word says that we were created in your image. And that that same Holy Ghost, the resurrection power of God, resurrects every dead situation and every dead financial status in Jesus' mighty name. There'll be surplus and surplus and heaps and heaps. Just as Pastor Rodney has spoken the word, I thank you, Lord, that there'll be so much blessing in our houses that we will bring and keep bringing and keep bringing. Why? Because we have heaps loaded upon heaps, loaded upon heaps of blessings everywhere we go. That goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. Wonderful Jesus. Not one of your children will faint. Not one of them will fall by the wayside. Not one of their fields will be overgrown. But I thank you, Lord, that it's only your goodness, your grace, your faithfulness, your productiveness that's at work in us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, whatever you are trusting God for tonight, watching online around the world, whatever you are trusting God for, Put your faith, connect your faith to your seed. Sow your seed into the kingdom of God. Watch this video clip of the African tour that is coming up. The seven countries. And then you put your faith into your giving. And you trust God with your life. Amen. Watch this video clip. The Lord said to me, run to the nations. I came to light a fire. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Souls must be your number one goal for your life. From now to Jesus comes. Because when the fire touches you, you're going to win souls and you're going to bring in the harvest of souls. the word of the Lord for yourself. It's got a plan on the inside of you. So we're going to see the harvest coming. Stand and fight by the power of the Holy Ghost. And tell the devil, you're not going to have my country. You're not going to have my nation. The whole of Africa is going to be shaken by the hand of God. I see Africa ablaze. Hallelujah. So I want the ushers to hand out the envelopes tonight. And then whatever the Lord tells you to do, do that. And give to the Lord tonight and put that seed in the ground. Connect your faith to the harvest of souls that are going to be one um, and this Africa tour and the lives that's going to be touched and changed and you are all a part of that and watching online, do your very best, best, do your very best gift tonight. Trust God with your life. Trust Him with everything that you got because He is the one that gives you the power to create wealth. He is the one that's looking after you. He is the one that is providing for you. He is your source of supply and He is with you forever. He is with you, before you, beside you, behind you, within you and the greater one is on the inside of you and He is your shepherd and He will not let you lack any good thing because you put your trust in Almighty God. Amen. There are different ways and options that you can give tonight. Uh, people are already calling in. The number is showing on your screen. You can give via calling in. You can even give uh, via Facebook and YouTube tonight. You can give via Pushpay. 
you just text this word give rmi to 77977 so if you're going to give just text if it's uh, giving via push pay tonight you just text this word give rmi to 77977 just text that word give rmi 77977 or if you give via paypal tonight you go to revival.com slash paypal or if you give via cash app just make sure you give to the right cash app address it's dollar sign revival ministries because there are different revival ministry ministry or ministry ministry people are the people are wicked so uh, that is the real true one dollar sign revival ministries just watch how it's spelled tonight and you can also go to revival.com just click on invest now um, and the drop down giving or you can write your checks out tonight just write it out rmi or if you call the number showing your screen many people have been calling in many different prayer requests people from california people from texas people from washington people from new york illinois different places new orleans alabama pennsylvania uh, Florida. So people are calling in. So you make sure if you're watching now, just call. We have prayer uh, warriors standing by to pray with you on all your prayer requests. All of these ones I can already see healed of all the pain after praying for me. My, my back is healed after praying for me, healing for lumps in my body. And they prayed for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we have people praying with you and for you. And you are watching here uh, live at the stand or watching online. Do your very best gift tonight. Just trust God. He is the Alpha and the Omega of your life. He is the shepherd, the bishop of your soul. And he is your provider. He is Al Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. You do not put your trust in men and horses or chariots. You do not put it, your faith in a system, a worldly system. You are planting your seed tonight in the kingdom of God. And while souls are being won, while people's lives are being touched and changed, it's coming to your account where God makes a way for you. It makes a way in your business. He makes a way in your provision. In, when you wake up, you have bright ideas. You, ha you know what to do. You have direction. You have the wisdom what to do. The, the, he divinely connects you with the right people at the right time, at the right place. That is, he orders your steps because God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in His giving. Amen? Amen? All right, so worship team, worship for us. While you guys uh, are giving, uh, giving online, um, you, can, uh, just, uh, you can hand up uh, or hand up the buckets and they can receive the offering. And then you give online right now. And as you worship, worship the Lord together. Worship Him with your seed. Father, we thank You for this seed that is being sown. We worship You tonight with this. We honor You with this seed. Amen. His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you He is with you, He is with you In the morning, in the evening In your coming and your going In your weeping and rejoicing He is for you, He is for you He is for you, He is for you He is for you, He is for you 
Hallelujah. Just lift your hands. Father, we honor you. And we love you. People are already rejoicing because they gave. <laughs> People are already responding because they know that with their God, they will run through a troop. They know that with their Lord, they will jump over every wall. <laughs> Huh? Come on, just lift your hands, lady. Full of life. <laughs> Miracles. <laughs> Lord, surprise her this night. Just surprise her with everything she wants. Delight yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. And He shall give you whatsoever you desire while you pray. When you pray, while you pray, you've been praying tonight. You've been giving now. You gave. You prayed. And now all you need to do is respond like somebody that has received. May His favor be upon you. Have favor with God and with people. Have favor. Step over here, dear sister. <laughs> I mean, favor! Favor! Have favor with God and with men. Listen, tonight is a supernatural surprise for you because you are loved. Tonight, all the disappointments of your past is going. People who did you wrong in business, people that did you on in family members. Just lift your hands, sir. You came tonight and the Lord has a plan for you here tonight. And the people that hurt you and the people that disappointed you and lied to you and caused you pain, I'm sorry. But we forgive them tonight. We do, we forgive them. And may His face shine upon you. May the glory of the risen King shine upon you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ flood your life tonight. May His love flood your life. May He restore your life tonight. Just come and step over here. I want to pray for you. Just stand here, sir. That's the word of the Lord for you tonight, sir. Just lift your hands and just forgive right now everyone that used you. So I forgive everyone. As Jesus. Thank you that you flood his life. Thank you that you fill him to overflow. And you watching online, allow the Holy Spirit to touch your life, to fill your heart, to overwhelm you with his goodness and his mercy. May the love of Christ just flood your life. Refuse to allow death and fear and regret Refuse to allow envy and jealousy and strife into your home. But may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon you, within you, with you, wherever you are. For He is soon coming. Very, very soon we will see the King of glory face to face. And I'm not going to sing it, but I can only imagine. 
<laughs> what it will be like. Oh! It's going to be glorious. It's going to be all power. All joyful. All in. Ah! Full of life. If you're going to live forever, you might start, just start living now. You, may, you might as well just come alive now. If you're going to live forever. You, you have nothing to hold back. Why do you want to hold back? You got eternal life. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice forevermore. For the King of glory is coming back. And He's coming back for you. I mean, we have something to shout about. We have something to be happy about. We <laughs> oh, I hear the sound. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we honor you. Oh, we praise you, Lord. For you are great. Yes, you are great. Oh, you are great, Lord. I pray for miracles in your home, miracles in your family, healing and restoration to take place tonight in your home. And that all the wrong choices that you have made. <laughs> that He will turn it around for your good. <laughs> All things work together for my good. Because I love you, Lord. I love you with all of my heart. Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel. He recovers sight to the blind. And those that have been captive. bound by drugs and addictions and alcohol and rock and roll. <laughs> Loose! And be made free. To such a tangible, loving kind presence of the Lord in this place and I trust that he fills and floods your homes for surely the Lord is in this place 
and he's busy beautifying your life and he's busy doing a work on the inside of you tonight God is at work in you because he wants to do it in you and through you he wants you to make life choices better choices strength bold courage choices he wants you to choose life I speak life over your family I speak life over your business I speak life over your dreams I speak life over everything that you that you are doing I speak life we speak life we are life givers we speak life that situation that you see that you are against the wall I'm telling you tonight every wall has fallen down flat The good news has come. <laughs> it's good news. Good news for you in your home. Good news for you standing here. Good news has come. It's good news. Great news. Just keep calling the number showing on your screen. We're here to pray with you tonight. Father, thank you for each and every one under the sound of my voice that the word will enter their hearts and that they will receive this word with gladness and meekness ready to do ready to change ready to move forward from tonight not to look back and not allowing their past to rule them and pass wrong choices but we put tonight everything to the past that is in the past and we stretch our faith towards this mark and we just refocus tonight to keep our eyes on you Jesus you are the author the finisher the perfecter of our faith surely we will run our race with a passion We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and we will not faint. You are delivering us from all our afflictions. You're the one who heals us of all disease. You're the one that strengthens us, that makes us bold, that gives us courage, that gives us so much life. And we lay hold on eternity tonight is our night because he loves us he cares for you so you care you cast your cares tonight every burden every care you cast it and he is receiving you with arms wide open he's the mighty counselor 
is the mighty helper, the ever-present help, the mighty Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the living Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, wonderful worship. We love you. Have a phenomenal seat. On Sunday at the resurrection service, uh, Pastor Rodney spoke something and it hit home. It hit my heart. And I thought that tonight I want to go in that direction and share with you God's word. And what Pastor Rodney said, he was showing us the video clips and the pictures of him racing on the car track or the race track. And, uh, and you could see on the pictures on his face that he was very focused. And then he said something, and then he said, when he is in the side or in the pit, and they are busy getting the wheels ready and the steering ready and making sure all the gas is in, and they're just making sure the car, once he gets out of this starting blocks, everything is fine and everything is working and everything is in good condition. He says that in that moment, he locks in, he gets his mind focused on one thing and he focuses on, is everything sorted? He knows, he balances in check, he knows, uh, he's thinking about the, the, the turn, he's thinking about the second turn, he's thinking about the third turn, how he's going to move around, how he's going to put the pedal to the metal, uh, how he's, uh, he's so focused in that moment, there's no opportunity in that moment to start thinking about Facebook, start thinking about your dog that died, or thinking about your, your, your past, or thinking about how you could have, you should have, you could have, you would have, maybe... Or there's no time in that moment to start thinking, oh, I wish I was. Or there's no time in that moment to think of, oh, the bills, I need to pay the bills, I need to pay this, I need to pay the car, I need to pay the house, where's the money, where's, the, where's my wife, where's my husband, where's my, where, where, what's going on? There's no time for that. In that moment, he has to lock in and set his mind on what is at hand. And then he said, he wants every born again believer to have that same mindset about the things of God. You have to make out for yourself this night. Are you born again? Are you truly born of God? Are you truly born of the Word of God? Are you truly born of the Spirit of God? If you believe that you are born of the Spirit of God, Word of God, and you're born of God, and you believe that you're a child of God, let me tell you that you have entered the kingdom. And this is the kingdom of God. And this kingdom is a kingdom of faith. And it is the realm of the Spirit. You have engaged yourself in the realm of the Spirit. And the realm of the Spirit is where faith is. And that, that is where God's Word is activated from the realm of the Spirit. The words that you even speak, they are spirit and they are life. And then the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 26 from verse 3, it says that if you can keep your mind focused and stayed on God, He will keep you in perfect, perfect peace. But you have to lock, load, stock and barrel. Get your mind focused on the things of God and God and His Word and eternal life and the victory in Christ and the boldness in Christ and the righteousness in Christ Jesus. And then the more than a conqueror overcome a life. You cannot have 
your mindset wander off in I am just a loser. I am just a nobody. I am just I'm just afraid. I'm just sick. I'm sick and tired. I'm worn out. I am weary. I am poor. I'm a nobody. I'm just trying. My life is hard. Life has knocked me over. Things are not going right. You, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're going to stay in that realm, I want to tell you that the enemy walks around like a roaring lion and looking and seeking whom he can devour and who he can actually crush and kill and steal from. It's the enemy's plan for you to die. It's the enemy's plan for you to suffer and not look very good. But now, if you have said yes to this kingdom, I want you to start to focus. You can't just every day refer back to your past. It is now gone. If, you're gonna, if you want to be fit for this kingdom, you're going to have to say yes to the things of God and no to the things of your past. If the thoughts want to come back into your memory banks and your memory banks want to infiltrate your thoughts and tell you how you were, what you did, where you went, and that's just your personality and that's just your life and just, you just, that's just nothing is going to change, you got to put a stop and an end to that thought now. Because you are in the driver's seat. Because I want to tell you this, my wife and myself, we spoke about this the other day. That the moment when you start and you're just taking off with the speed of that car, you get to 10 miles per hour, then 20 miles per hour. Are you with me? If at 20 miles per hour you do this with the steering wheel, you are still okay. Right? Because the car is still moving slow. So you can, you can do that. But when you hit 200 miles per hour and you do that with your steering wheel, bye-bye. <laughs> and that's what I say to a lot of people. When you just get saved, you just get born again, you just become a child of God, then great, you're just in that starting block of life. And then the, when you, oh God, <laughs> things are, I, I'm still talking the way I want to talk. I'm still doing what I want to do. I'm still my past and my uh, everything. And I'm just everywhere with my mind. And it's okay, calm, because you, you, you're still not off track. You, you're getting, you're working out your salvation. But there comes a time when God blesses you and when God's hand is upon you and His favor is upon you and where you are running your race and you're coming to that speed where the Holy Ghost is taking you. You can't now just start talking anyhow and doing anyhow and saying what you want and be what you want. No, because I'm a child of God now. I need to get my mind right. I need to get focused. The thoughts that come into my head, if the thoughts... Listen, let me tell you this. Being a child of God, being born of God, having the greater one on the inside of you, when a thought comes into you, hey, uh, you're going to die, you do something with that thought. You don't just, huh, really? When a thought comes into you as a child of God that, listen, you are poor, you're not going to make it. You got to do something with that thought. You can't just let that thought get in you, get in your eyes, get in your ears, get in your heart, and then in turmoil, stress, anxiety, fear, and then I'm back at the beginning. You are now born again, blood washed, cleansed of all unrighteousness, filled with the Holy Spirit and fire, baptized through water, born again, born of God, born of the Word, victorious, blessed going out, blessed coming in, none of your steps shall slide. This is the mindset of the righteous. This is the mindset of the children of God. We have come to God and we believe that God is who He says He is. 
We have come to the Word of the knowledge of Christ. We have come to the truth of God's Word and the truth makes us free. We have come where the Spirit of the Lord is and there is freedom. There should not be a thought inside of you tonight of, I am not free. I am not happy. What? If you're a child of your mama and your papa, I can understand if you're not happy. But if you're telling me you're a child of God, then we have to now talk. And we have to tell you, hey, you've got to refocus now. That thought is not supposed to be in your heart. I cannot stop the birds from flying over your head and pooping on your hair. But you can stop that bird from sitting on your head and start making and laying eggs. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Do everything that you do without complaining and arguing. When you sit behind that steering wheel and you hit 200 miles per hour, let me, there is no time for you to argue. What do you want to complain about? You're at speed, baby. You're full of speed. You got to make that turn. And then coming up that turn is the next turn. And coming from the next turn is the straight. And then another turn. And if you're going to start arguing and complaining and whining and murmuring, you're going to miss the turn and you're going to crash against the wall. Leave the arguments to the babies. Amen. <laughs> to the children. It's children. It's my toy. <laughs> Why did you eat my cereal? Where's my cookie? I also want a cookie. Where's my car? Why do you get blessed with the car? Where's my car? Why do you get blessed with that? Where's my house? If you're going to allow envy and jealousy at 200 miles per hour driving, you're going to miss the turn. Your tires is going to blow up because you sound like a squeaky wheel. Nobody likes me. Nobody cares about me. Why am I always the lonely one? I feel so abandoned right now. But being on 200 miles per hour, this is how the child of God reasons. Oh, he will never leave me. Oh, he will never forsake me. So that I can boldly say, boldly declare, Lord, you're my helper. That's why Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. And now that I have matured in the things of God, I put away childish reasonings. Amen. Your mindset should be on life. And everything that is praiseworthy. Yes. You've got to exercise your mindset on to godliness. It is work when thoughts come your way to do something with it, to submit those thoughts. If any ungodly, negative, useless thought gets into your temple, you tell that thought to go, go, go. Amen. Not my body, not my temple. My body is a living tabernacle. It's a living sacrifice. I refuse to be conformed to this world and its systems. You have to. You heard my wife. She said, you have received keys of the kingdom. Now you're at the speed of the Holy Ghost. You're at a born again pace. You're at a faith, walking, talking, uh, 
Shakabo, Rekebo, Sateke. You are, you are moving forward and upward. You, you, you walk, wake up. I'm blessed, highly favored, deeply loved. You, you sow your seeds. You actually, you give, you, 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 you speak. You, you declare and now suddenly when the thoughts come in and you're on this race and you're running your race and then people just stop running at that speed because oh, I'm upset. What are you upset? You're running your race. My family. My family called me. They didn't call me for Christmas. Yeah? Nobody hugged me today. They did not? No. And I really wanted the hug. That's all I wanted. Listen, if you engage in this kingdom, and if you engage, it's like that Top Gun movie. You, you engaged not to be married. Relax. But you're engaged now in this kingdom. It's like... A <laughs> This is a fight of faith. At the moment, fiery darts are being shot at you. I'm telling you, you cannot see it, but there's fiery darts shooting at you. Somebody is saying, hey, did you see that guy's outfit? Doesn't look good. Have you seen that one? I, he always, no money, no money. You see that guy? No, he's not going to make it. You see that girl? No, she's not going to make it. Fiery darts are being shot at you right now. Hey, come drink, 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 drink. Hey, come, let me inject, inject, inject. All the fiery darts want to addict you, bound you, kill you, crush you, steal you. They want to take your joy. Hey, I want to take your joy. And then a lot of people in this kingdom, okay, take it, take it now. What, you want my joy? Take it. You want my health? Take it. The Bible says resist the devil. Resist him. And say absolutely not. I am a giver and I'm a cheerful giver. I am a blesser, not a curser. I speak life. I refuse to speak death. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one criticizes you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God. You have to shine bright like a, not like a diamond. You gotta shine bright as lights in the world that is full of crooked and perverse people. Listen, out here, outside there, this world is full of crooked and perverse people. The people are trying to take you out, let me tell you that. And it's proof positive. You would think that people will be happy for you now that you're a child of God, now that you're blessed, favored, that you are loved and that you're so wonderful and that you're smiling and that, you, that you've got joy and that you are happy and that you are running your race and you're making your faith work and you're working out your salvation. You would think people are happy for you. Well, you, when you get to heaven, you go to Lazarus very quickly because the Bible says when Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, he was so happy, he told everybody, I was dead, but I'm alive. I was dead, I'm alive. He was dancing, shouting, rejoicing. And then the Bible says in the book of John, the people came together and they planned how they're gonna kill Lazarus again. The priests came together and said, Lazarus is too happy. Lazarus was dead, now he's alive. We're gonna kill him again. How are we gonna, what are we gonna put in his food? You give the guy a break. He was just dead for four days. Can you just give the guy a break? There's no break. The, fi <laughs> the fiery darts are being shot. Where's my shield of faith? To quench. A thousand shall fall at my side. 10,000 at my right hand. It does not have power over you. Listen, you are not Bambi.
Don't be so easily chewable, gullible. Don't let the enemy so easily lie to you. Just one, it, it, it takes him one thought to give you one single thought. He upsets you a whole day. What happened this morning? I went out of my house. I thought it's going to be a great day. Then the enemy passed me in the form of a motorcyclist. And he shouted and sweared at me because I was driving in the wrong side of the road. I was just actually, it wasn't happening to me. I'm just telling you, I'm giving you an illustration. There was a guy. <laughs> I'm just telling you how easy the enemy just put thoughts in you because of your day. And it throws you off. And then I have, I have family members and friends. If they're upset with you for a whole week, they won't speak to you. A whole week. Hey, can we talk? Hey, what's wrong? Is it something I did? Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. What's wrong? No, I got upset a week ago because you, you didn't wash the dishes and now I don't speak to you for a week. <laughs> People do that. May you be saved tonight. <laughs> Shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. You got to shine bright. Stop dimming. People dim, 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 and dimmer. They once were shining bright. But the pressures of life became too big and wrong choices. The, the ninth wife I married was the wrong wife. <laughs> I once was shining, and now I'm just dimming. There's a world out there where you have to be alert. You got to get focused. You got to get on track. You, when you're running your race and you're getting to the speed of the Holy Ghost, where you're starting to bear fruit of righteousness and where there's joy in your life and where there's peace in your life, the enemy wants to come and take that joy. Well, are you going to allow that? And what, what thought is he going to put in your head that makes it very easy for you just to become stubborn again and so upset with life and so sad and so mad? You know how many people we meet every day who is offended? Offended with life, offended with people, offended with church, offended with work, offended, offended, offended. And they, they are the ones when they get to the gates of heaven where the angel says, hey, Peter, take the book. I can't deal with this man. <laughs> He's always offended, always murmuring, complaining. Always striving. I am right. You are wrong. No, you are right. And I am I am right, you are wrong. Always. Never coming to say, listen, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry, forgive me. No, I'd rather just not talk to you and make us that it was still your fault. You got to hold firm to the word of life. On the day of Christ's return. The, the, the Bible verse that my wife read, Philippians chapter 4 from verse 4. Rejoice, I say, rejoice always in the Lord. Be anxious for nothing. Refuse to be anxious when you're at this speed and you're so alert and awake and you're so you're so refreshed and fired up. Don't allow anxiety. Don't allow it. You have no business in becoming anxious. Not the child of God. Leave that to the babes. The babies can go, uh, uh, um, uh, the rent, the rent. Help. <laughs> The babies can go, 
ah, I don't feel well, I don't feel well. The babies can go, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to uh, continue life anymore. No, not you. You are no longer a baby. Amen. You're a child of God. I mean, you have uh, this treasure in your earthen vessel. How do you even allow, uh, how are you gonna, how are you gonna deal with the rejection in life? How are you going to deal with the pressures of life? You need to start dealing with it. Out of your spirit man, your word man, your faith man. You got to deal with it. You got to cheer up because God, Jesus said, I have overcome this world. You better cheer up. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with praying, supplication, with thanksgiving, you make your request known unto God, then the peace of God floods your life. It passes all understanding. It will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. And then finally, say finally. finally. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honest and just and pure and lovely and of a good report, think about these things. Who has believed our report? What is your report? What is the record that God has given unto us eternal life? What is your report tonight? Oh my God, my report is I'm shining. I'm a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. The Lord is my helper. Whom shall I fear? A thousand shall fall at my side. Ten thousand are under. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's the one that makes me lie down in green pastures. He's the one that's leading me. He's the one that brings me into this place of continually, continually victory, victory victory from glory to glory God is taking us you are now listen the, 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 the brothers and sisters of old when Jesus gave them the baton and he said now you go wait in Jerusalem and you will receive the Holy Spirit and power and you will become witnesses unto me and you will go spread this gospel everywhere and you are going, you're gonna go shine brightly yeah. because your path is as the shining light yeah. that shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Yeah. Then they took that baton and they went to Cornelius' house and said, here you go, buddy. <laughs> and then the, the John went to another person's house, here you go. Then Philip came to <laughs> the chariot and he said, here you go. Here's the gospel. And they got baptized. It was wonderful. And then through that generations, the baton of the gospel has come to you. And now you have it in your hand. What do you have in your hand? Oh, I got Christ in me, the hope of glory. I got eternal life. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I'm a new man. I can do something with my thought life today. I can submit every single thought to the Lordship of Christ. I can resist the devil and he shall flee and he shall go. I can take authority over my body and tell my body, my body, be healed. and stay healed, organs function. Like my wife told you the other day, you gotta preach the gospel to your organs. Some of your organs are attacking you, your heart. What, what happened? No, my organ attacked me. Your organ? Where? In, from inside. He just attacked me. <laughs> so the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 3, since you have been raised to the new life with Christ, you got to set your sights on the realities of heaven. 
That's why when you sing that beautiful say, song, I'll set my sights only on Him. And these things on earth, they grow strangely dim. <laughs> Where have your sights been when, when you go hunting? Let me tell you, if you don't have that telescope and that sight 300, 400, 500 yards further, there's that small animal standing there and you are so far away. If you don't have that sight on him and you just have your gun, let me tell you, you're just going to shoot somewhere. <laughs> But when you put your sight on that thing, on the target, you're going to hit it. But then you've got to be full of peace when you hit that target. You've got to be full of, you've got to breathe. You've got you to focus. You've got to put all your attention. This is the moment. You've been walking. You've been talking. You've been giving. You've been praising. You've been rejoicing. You've been dancing. You've been shouting. And now the enemy wants to put thoughts into your head. What are you going to do? Because his plan is to take you out, to take your family out, to take the children out, to take the dog out and take everything out. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Just no, just no place. Not even place, a little door. Let him just come through the one eye. I'll just watch the internet with one eye. Maybe half naked is good. And then you give place to the devil. And then a spirit of lust takes you over. Or just a, a little bit. I just want a little bit. I want what they have. Then that little bit of envy come in. Or that anger it just comes in, it starts one place, one place, because now you're thinking, this is what they said, this is what they did, this is what they said, this is what they did, this is what they said, this is what they did. And then, and then you get so angry, and then you get so angry. Did I tell you about that guy that was sitting in his apartment? There was nobody with him. He was sitting alone. And he was just thinking he should vacuum the carpet because it's dirty. But then he was reminded himself that I don't have a vacuum cleaner. But then he remembered that he heard the other day his neighbor has a vacuum cleaner because he heard him vacuum his apartment. And then he started thinking, but he's not going to give me the vacuum cleaner because I parked in his parking spot the other day. And he wrote a note to me, put it on my windshield, telling me that I'm this piece of nonsense kind of guy. So now I'm sitting on my chair thinking about my neighbor who's not going to give me his vacuum cleaner. And you work yourself up. You work yourself up. You, work, you can't believe he's not going to give you the vacuum cleaner. And it's just you. You are just thinking. Up until the time when there's a knock on his door and he goes outside and he opens the door and it's the neighbor. And instead of just calmly, peacefully asking, hey neighbor, what can I help you with? He just say, you neighbor, take your vacuum cleaver, get a vacuum cleaner. Just. <laughs> and that's what people do with their thought. Their thoughts is going everywhere. And you get so upset. This morning, my wife didn't greet me. We go, went out there, she didn't greet me. Now the whole day, can't believe she didn't greet me. Can't believe she didn't greet me. Does she even love me? I, we've been married for so long and she didn't greet me. And she didn't greet me nicely. And she didn't greet me at all. I'm really upset. I'm so, you work yourself up the whole day. So when the day is after work, she comes home. She has cooked the dinner and she says, hi honey, take the food. That's what people do every day with their thoughts. May I remind you that you're a child of God. May I remind you that the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you. May I remind you that you're a temple of God. May I remind you that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And may I remind you 
that the same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from that lives in you. May I remind you that the soon coming King Jesus is coming very, very soon. And then you will see him face to face and then he will tell you, well done, or medium, or rare, or whatever he's gonna tell you, but he's gonna say, well done, enter the joy of the Lord. And then when you go in, you're gonna go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then you will eat what you've never eaten before. You will drink what you've never drunk before. You will sing songs you've never heard before or sung before. You will hit notes that you ever thought that's imaginable of noting it out. And that's why Colossians 3 is so important for you tonight. Think about the things of heaven, not all the things of this earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ. Then now put to death the sinful earthly things lurking inside of you. All the desires that is fleshly coming out of you. Put it to death. Put an end to it. Don't be like a lamb going to the slaughterhouse every day. A lot of young people today, how did you end up in that mess? Oh, he just said he likes me. <laughs> he said, I have beautiful legs. <laughs> and now, 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 now I'm in problems. Wrong choices. <laughs> Wrong time. <laughs> Put to death sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust and evil desires. Just have nothing to do with it. Amen. Just say no. Yeah. Tell the devil go. Pastor, but he's so handsome, he can't be the devil. <laughs> and it's because of these things that the anger of God is coming. <laughs> but the Bible says, you, born again one, you used to do these things. Not anymore. That's your old man. Bye-bye, old man. I'm a new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a new species. Yeah. The Bible says, you used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of all anger. Get rid of all and every anger and the spirit of anger. Let it go. Yeah, tell Elsa, let it, just let it go. And rage and malicious behavior, slander, dirty language. Just let it go. You have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. All you have to do is put on your new nature. Have the mindset of Christ. Think about <laughs> Think. <laughs> Think right. Think God. Think word. Think eternal life. Think blessings. Think, <laughs> think health. Think strength. Think courage. <laughs> think resurrection. Life. Think glory. Think boldness. You are surrounded with the heavenly hosts. And those that have come before us on the banisters are looking over, cheering you on. You running your race and you have picked up speed. You are born again. You are blood washed. You are cleansed. You are pure and holy, accepted in the beloved. You are baptized through water, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And you're running your race. Stop looking back. <laughs> Put
Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. And since God chose you to be holy, clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy. Clothe yourself with kindness tonight. Clothe yourself with humility and gentleness and patience. You're going to clothe yourself with patience and kindness. Be kind and have mercy and show mercy. Stop being so stubborn. Make allowance for other people's faults and forgive everyone who offends you. Just forgive. Every morning when you wake up, before you even put on any makeup, start forgiving everyone that offended you. Forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. Then you go brush your teeth. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I let go, I release, I let go. I forgive, I, and then you comb your hair. I forgive, I forgive. Then you get in your car, I forgive. Because let me tell you, 70 times thousands of millions of 70,000 times seven. 70 times seven. Do not be that one to become better in your race. Amen. It will cost you your life. Amen. Don't get offended in your race. It will cost you your life. Don't live in your past. It will cost you. You will hit against the wall on your next turn because you keep looking back. The Bible says, Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. This is what you can do to encourage you on this fast-paced life of the race that you are on. To take a hold of your reward, take a hold of your prize, take a hold of this victory. You got to praise Him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For His mercies endures forever. Praise Him, praise Him. Magnify, glorify. Worship you, Lord, today. For this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. And then you, you spice it up. Ora mandere, le manoro, rimanane. Because you're running your race. Amen. And you're giving glory to God. Yeah. And you praise Him. Hallelujah. That's how you feel this car that you're in. That's how you feel this temple. That's how you activate this power, this anointing that you have received. May I remind you of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, I put you in remembrance of this and then we'll pray. I put you tonight in remembrance of this thing to stir up the gift of God that you have received by the laying on of hands. If you have received the Holy Ghost since you believe, you got to stir up the gift. You got to stir up this power. You got to stir up this life. You got to acknowledge every good thing that you have on the inside. You got to acknowledge the word. You got to put your sight securely and focused on him and put your mindset on the things of God and the word of God and life and eternal and joy and peace and victory every moment of every day as you walk by the wayside as you go on the road if you are wherever you go whatever you do whatever you lay your hands upon whatever your reasonings are every day is the day of the Lord that He has made and you are right in the middle of it. He knows the very hair on your head that is numbered. He knows the end to the beginning, the beginning to the end and He has predestinated unto us good works unto salvation and He has fashioned you together perfectly. Created you, crafted you and picked you. No longer born of your mother and your father but born of Him and He has and no longer you're born of the first Adam, but you are born after the second and the last Adam who has made us a quickening spirit. I mean, there's a quickening in you. The fire power. So the next time you sing, fire power moving in this place. You are that firecracker. Full of the Holy Ghost.
Pastor, if I can just go and sleep now, that will be great. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't know my situation. Mine is a big one. Mine is a long family line of problems. My great aunties are aunties, are grandmothers are grandmothers, a grandfather. They were serving in the hula manati. And now I just feel like a tamati. Listen. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. So just close your eyes everywhere you're sitting and watching online. If you're not a new creation, tonight is your night. If you are not bold and full of life and full of God and full of Christ and, and you have not received the Holy Spirit and you have not received eternal life, tonight's your night. I want to ask you this dangerous question. If tonight is your last night on this physical earth and you would die tonight, where are you going to spend eternity? Because there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Because 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, the, the price was paid. For you. The blood was shed for you. Jesus did himself. He became sin who knew no sin. Just for you. So that you can live. Maybe you're sitting here tonight or you're watching online. And you are doubting your eternal salvation. Because of what has happened in your life. And you just feel that you got sidetracked with a big truck out of hell. It just took you off course. And you were like that car going at 200 miles per hour. And then suddenly you took the wrong turn and you crashed. And your life has been in scrambled eggs from then. Come home tonight. Come and make right with God tonight. Don't be so offended with life and people. Don't be so upset and angry no more. Don't be so, don't allow that jealousy and envy to take you out. Don't allow bitterness to take you out of this planet. Don't die on us tonight. But come to Jesus and let him come and heal you. Let him come and restore your life. Just let him come. Just let him come. Just let him come and do a work on the inside of you tonight. I want you to ask yourself this personal question. Am I offended? Am I angry with life and God? Do you blame God? Are you better? Are you afraid? Are you full of fear? If you fit in any of, any of these categories, I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you tonight. Let's make things right with God. So I want everybody that is here tonight just to stand to their feet. I want you, them to, you to lift your hands. And as we worship... And as we just tell the Lord how beautiful He is. I want to give an opportunity to pray for you. But I want you to call the numbers showing on the screen right now. Because we have people standing by to just pray for you personally as well. So whether it is for the first time to give your heart to Jesus or whether it is you're making right with Jesus, whether it is you're letting go of everything that has connected you to death and destruction and, and, and all of the distractions that has taken you off of this path of life. Just come, stand here in the front.
And while everybody's heads are bowed and eyes are closed and hands lifted high, if you know that tonight you're just going to receive that completeness, just stand. No, just stand. 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 It's fine. Stand. Hello. Asha. It's fine. Stand. Stay. Is there anybody else? Don't worry about what people might think because soon or very soon you're going to see Jesus yourself. And then there's not going to be then time to say, hey Jesus, I want to tell you, I was that one night at stand, I really wanted to go to the front, but I really didn't know if I should go, shouldn't I go? And then now I'm, I, I died and now I'm here with you and I just wonder what will happen with my life. No, tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. Sing us a song. Just worship. The Lord is touching you in your home as well. The Lord is taking care of you in your home, your household, your family. And I believe that from tonight, the Lord's going to speak to you. Let Him give you vision. Let Him give you dreams. Just open your heart. Just open your heart to the Lord. So I want to pray a prayer. And then we will say bye to the online audience till tomorrow at the stand. And then I'm going to pray for you personally standing here tonight. So if you're watching online and you're standing here and you're standing in the crowd, just pray. Everybody pray this prayer out loud so that we can confirm a few things for your life. Just out loud with all of your heart and believe it. Just say these words. Jesus. 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 I believe. With all of my heart, with all of my heart. That, you are my Lord, that you are my Lord, that you are my Savior. Are my Savior. Thank, you Thank you that you save me. That you, save me. You, deliver me you deliver me from any power of darkness. Power of darkness. Tonight, Tonight, I receive, I receive complete freedom. By the resurrecting power of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washes me, cleanses me. I receive complete forgiveness. And I forgive everyone that has ever wronged me, used me, abused me and lied to me and disappointed me and I let everyone go and I forgive myself for blaming myself I receive the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the mercy of Christ today I am free. Today I am healed. Today I am restored. Today I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Lord. And online, if you prayed with us, call the number showing on your screen and then we'll see you tomorrow at the stand and from Pastors Rodney and Adonica and the River Church here in Tampa Bay and the stand going on for thousands of days. And we want to tell you we love you and thank you for being part of the stand and thank you for always giving and participating and putting your faith into the kingdom of God and putting your faith in Jesus. And then we love you so much and God bless you. Bye-bye.
everything shall tremble and quake. I saw it in the spirit, the shout that will be heard around the world. Because there's coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ will rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. the shout that will come in 